Part of displaying tags with dynamic sizes in Bubble, this can be very tricky sometimes. It can be very tricky and it can be, you know, a bit hard for you to do. But when you want to use this, you want to, so sometimes you want to use this for your onboarding, say you're doing social media and you want to ask your users, hey, what do you like? I mean, what kind of stuff do you prefer? Or maybe you want your users to post and then you're asking them, you're asking them to add a tag to it. So maybe they say, um, you've seen it on Medium. You must have seen it on Medium. So you want to post a Medium article and Medium is asking you to add a couple of tags to it that are pretty popular. So uh, this kind of tag could range from tech and a whole lot more. So I want to show you how to create that kind of dynamic tag in Bubble. So I'm going to display an example here. So we have like tag. So I'm going to say like tag one. So like tag two, tag two. Tag three, tag four. So you can see it just keeps on going. So you can see that one thing about this tag is that it's it just expands. So it expands based on what I type inside of it. So if this is a school tag, so it's gonna fill the next space when it is because it's pretty long. So it expands based on what I type into it. So let's see how this is done. So um, <laughs> this is the title, right? So you don't have to you don't have to think about that. So I'm using the combination of repeating groups, inputs. That's what I'm using: repeating groups, inputs, and custom states. That's what I'm using. So these tags doesn't have to be custom states. It could be something from your database. It could, it could be um, you, the user just type in and then once they click on continue, you can add everything to your database as some kind of tag to identify your users. It's fine. So what you do is this. What I, what, the way to do this is this. So I'm pretty sure you know how to create an input. So this is just an input. And this is, this is an input. This is a, 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 a group. Yeah. This is a group and this is an add. So when you add an input, it will add. So I created a custom state. So this is the custom state here. The custom state is called tags and is a test, yeah, and is a list. So every time a person click on this add, what will happen? It will so let me show you what happened. It will just, you know, add that particular tag to the repeating group. It doesn't save anything to the database, but if you want to make it save, it's fine. But it doesn't save anything at all to the database and that's what I like. So uh, um, the way you would normally do it, if you want it to save to the database, it when you when the user is done entering the tag and they click on somewhere around here that says continue, um, yeah, they they likely be a button around here that says continue. When they click on it, then you will update. You will set the list of the of the database feed that you want to fix. So let's go back to our design. So right here you have a repeating group test. Yeah, this is a repeating group right here and you can see it's type content. The type of content is test. Why? Because it is coming from a custom state. It is not coming from the database and data source is the repeating group list. That tag, the custom state, that's what the data source is. And then the way I said it was I did a minimum height of 50. That means each row and each column is going to be a 50 by 50 on the minimum. It's not going to be less than 50 by 50 on the minimum. And then this is where you have the magic. The magic here that says wrap horizontally. If you say wrap, if you say horizontal, it wouldn't work the way you want it to work. So see the way it's going to look like. If you say horizontal, it's not going to work the way you want it to work. I say tag, just add it. Tag 2. You can see it's going to stack underneath the tag 3. It's not going to wrap. So what wrap means is that, hey, I want you to take the other space. So I want you to take the other space, just take the space next to it. So if I add, if I, if a user type something, if a user type a word here and the space close to the first space, the first tag is big enough, it will add it. So that's the way it works. So I'm doing this 50 by 50 and I'm doing a wrap horizontally. And then I give it a row cell gap and column cell gap. So this is where it is. The, so I'm going to refresh here. So if I say tag, so tag one. So the row, the row, you know, row is like, you know, you're stacking things on top of each other. When you stack things on top of each other, that's a row. The more things appear side by side, that's a column. So the column gap is the distance between this tag and the next tag. So I'm going to show you um, the row. Oh. 
power okay so the distance between between this this one which is it's saying this is a row gap two and tag one it's a row gap so you i'm adding a 10 by 10 row gap if you add, if you increase the row, row gap it's going to be a whole lot more and then uh if you go back to the layout you would see i didn't touch anything in the layout it's as uh, same same as possible then what you see here it's a button so this button is just it has a width of zero the reason why it has a width of zero is so that it can um, so that I don't give it any width at all so, so so that it can really fit the width to content so I give it a minimum width of zero and then fit width to content this is very important fit width to content and then a mean height of 40 or 40 so it's going to be as high as 40 and then it's fitting the height to content and then here it says fit height to content so super awesome cool then i give it a margin top and margin bottom so the reason why i give it a margin top and margin bottom is so if this is not here so it's going to keep touching each other and i don't want it to to do so just imagine this repeating group has some sort of a border it's going to touch the border which is not cool and then i give it a, a margin left and a margin right it's not compulsory that you have to do so i just did it because i want to and then if you look at my my repeating group like i said is displaying the tag but here if you want to do so you have to display the current cell test so while i was doing it it was a bit it was a bit weird that what i was displaying was the repeating group so you might be tempted to display the repeating group tag yes like so tags you might be tempted to do so but if you are then it's not going to work very well because you're going to be displaying all the tags so if i say tags if I add tag tag one, so you can see if I add tag two, it's going to be displaying all the tag, and that's basically not what you want. What you want is that you want to display a single tag per button. So you be like current sales test. That's what you. That's what you're doing. So that's basically the way you go ahead and um, you go ahead and set up this kind of dynamic feed. You can see there is no. Um, there is no database setup or whatsoever. I'm just using a custom state to do this. So recap, you would have to provide the, the user a way to input the tag, and then you would have to create a repeating group. And the most important thing, you have to uncheck all of this. Set face rows, you have to uncheck it. Set face to column, you have to uncheck it. And then on wrap, wrap horizontally must be checked. So you can give it a, a, a height, mean height and a mean width. You know mean height of row and the mean width of column if you want to and then all other things are very very similar and then when you come to the button or the test that you want to add here you can just give it a mean height and a zero width so that's it um that's it for today you you know you can always you know come back for new tutorial and just keep checking i'm definitely going to leave this tutorial in the community for you thank you very much for watching